It is nothing short of a dream to be sitting here talking to you right now, and today we are doing Only in Dreams by Weezer for the following individuals with excellent musical taste. And, uh, won't you be my neighbor? Char... Chris Marl, Hunter J, Miguel Guerra, and Daniel McLean. Here we go. Step one, detune your guitar. That means all the strings go down one half step from where they normally are. If you don't know how to do that, there is a link in the description for you of my video on how to do that, and we'll all wait for you. Okay, good. Step two, the bass line. Why not? Because it's the only thing that happens at the start. You don't want to sit there and wait. A string second fret. Up to five and do a hammer on from five to seven. Then pull off from seven to five and end up on E5. And then A5, A3. One more time slow. At which point, Brian chimes in with the Wonderwall chords. The first one is, I believe, an E minor 7. Well, I know it's this, but it's a matter of what you call it. You see, E minor 7 is this. Strum all of them, but we just want to strum from the A string. So it's E minor 7 with a B in the bass, because that A string 2nd fret is a B note. But I'm playing a G chord with no middle finger. Gotta do with both of these, because this D along with this D, is what makes it an E minor 7, but yeah, so, no E string, mute it. Now we're gonna move up to, you could just move your middle finger up to make that a C note. Or you could plop your pointer finger on the D string 2nd fret as well to make it a C add 9 chord in its entirety like you usually have. But that E note explains why, so this B note, explains the bass is B, right? And this E note explains the bass is E. He's not playing an E root, he's playing an E third from our, our C major chord, right? Okay, so E minor seven with a B in the bass. C add nine, with or without the pointer finger. I like without, do whichever. Now this chord's neat, we're gonna take pointer and middle fingers and put them like we're gonna play an A. So D2, G2, leave your pinky on the E string third fret, that's a G note, that makes our A chord an A7, and leave the B string open. That's a suspended two, so there's a lot going on in that chord. And then the fourth chord, also a five string chord, by the way. The fourth chord is the funnest one. We're gonna play a D7, but not like usual. We're gonna play A, 5, D4, G5, open B, and you strum the first three, A, D, G, very, very uh, casually there, and then you pluck the B string, and you do that twice. So we have. Anyways, River's enigmatic part chimes in with the incongruous uh, open B string action going on, uh, typical of the Weezer Blue album, a la the Sweater Song, right? And he's gonna do... Now, I saw him on the live versions I checked out moving up here, um, but I lacked inspiration to figure all that out. I got the notes right down here mostly, so let's do it that way. G string open, D string second fret. Rest. Rest. Rest, but this time it's gonna be G open, G2, back to open, and then on the G string fifth fret, and the B string open. So, three, notice the rest at the beginning. Uh, that's why I said rest. <laughs> Two, three, four, rest. Every other time, or just kind of once in a while, he does that last few notes this way. So it starts the same. And then G string third fret. B open, and there's that sweater song-like stuff going on there. So that whole bit, while Brian is 
power cord or uh, wonder wall cording away, and the bassist is doing his thing. Is three, four, one, and. <laughs> That brings us to the chorus, I believe. Do not move. Neighbor. May I call you neighbor? Yeah, whoops, the harmonics that Rivers enters with are the E, A, D, and G strings, 12th fret, on this rhythm. It sounds like there's an extra syllable in there. But there's only four. All right, here comes the chorus. Uh, and the other thing I forgot to mention about Rivers' part in the verse is it sounds like he puts a sly slide up on the D string, super quick grace note like this. Right, sometimes, not every time, but certainly sometimes. Super grace notey. Okay, now the chorus, I promise. Oh my gosh, on the G string too on that part. It's totally there, listen for it. Okay, now the chorus. All right, the chorus is hysterical. Part, this is the part you really want, right? Do power chords, do a B on the E string. You could do it down here, but I find it easier to stay on the E string, so I'm gonna go B on the seventh fret of the E string, seven, nine, nine. We're gonna go B, B, A, G, seven, seven, five, three. And then we're gonna switch to the A string and go C, C, B, A. You can also do that as 8875, either one. So, repeat that. A little key change action here, this is awesome. F, B flat. First fret of the E and then the A string, respectively. Followed by G, C. Third fret of the E string and A string, respectively, and then the first bit again, and then the funny part on the A string, three, three, four, five. All right, here we go. Whole chorus. Ready? Go. Of course, then we have the wailing away octave chords that do exactly what the bass line is, but we're gonna keep it all on the E string so we don't have to change strings with our octave chords. It makes it a little smoother. So we're gonna start on our B like the bass did, but on the seventh fret of the E string, and we're not gonna play a power chord. We're gonna skip the A string and put some other finger, your ring or your pinky finger, on the D string ninth fret. Everything else, meaning the A, the G, the B, and the E strings are muted with your pointer finger or your and or your ring finger, and so you can just strum away, and all we hear are the A and the D strings, that's octave chords. Up to E 12th fret, down to A 5th fret, up to D 10th fret, C 8th fret. guitar tinkling away like this as things die out. We're doing a D shape on the 7th and 8th fret, so what is this? Well, I've told you before, and I'll say it again, that the root note of a D shape is the B string. So whatever note this is, that's what chord we're playing. B12 is B, because 12 is the octave spot, right? B, B flat, A, A flat, G. This is a G chord. And he sus fours it. And the other thing he does is slide up on the G string with the middle finger from seven to nine and play a little mini F shape, eight, eight, nine, and that's a that's a C chord. F G A B C. So whatever suits your druthers there. For the uh, super chill part there in the in the almost end. 
It's, it's, it's right here. That's where it is. I'm going to keep listening. Don't move. All right, so then as things start to build out of this part, uh, he switches to A string octave chords. So they're done the same way, but now we're moving from the E and the D strings to A and the G strings, and he's following the G major or the E minor scale. They're the same scale, but here are your options. Start on G on the A string, 10th fret, and the G string, 12th fret. That's a G note twice, octave chord. We got 10, 12, 14, 15, 17. Going back down, 10, 9, 7, 5. And that signature thing that you hear is, this is a D here up on the 17th fret of the A string. Down to 10, 12, 14, 15, 9 is that signature thing that you hear. So mess around with whatever you like there and throw the signature thing in every so often. And here comes the big crashing end. And the cool, really high parts going on. He's soloing in E minor pentatonic, but he's soloing in three different shapes up here. I'm gonna give you, well, E minor pentatonic, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15, and he adds some notes to it. So here, just to give you a start, do whatever you want there, um, but just to give you a start, play E, the top note of our E minor pentatonic that I just showed you is 15, now play 14, and bend it, then play 12, and then play B12, 11, 10, and then G12. That definitely happens. Instead of that B12, 11, 10, you could do G16. That happens, and then he's all up on the... See, uh, there you go, 19th fret. He goes all the way up there, so you can mess around with that to your heart's content. We should do all the minor pentatonic shapes someday, and we definitely will. We've talked about three. We should talk about all of them in one succinct video, but that's all I have to say about Only in Dreams for you four gentlemen with excellent taste in music and for you as well. So thank you so much for being here, and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.